Hi everyone, and joining us today is the director of FOMO Shorts, please, Nupur Astana. Nupur, welcome to the Quint. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Diksha. Uh, how are you doing today? I just want to begin by asking, how have you been holding up? How has the lockdown been for you? Uh, were you at work when uh, this got announced? Were you working or were you? Actually, I was in the middle of shifting houses. Wow. So, uh, you know, and it, and it happened just like a couple of days before the lockdown was announced. So I was very fortunate, uh, you know, in, in being able to do that. And of course, I was busy setting up my house and all. And of course, then the show released. And since then, it's been just like a blur of uh, activity and emotions, all online, of course. Apart from all the love that FOMO Shorts Please has got, um, there are people who are dissing the show, like parts of the audiences. I want to understand from you, how do you take the dissing? So I, I know that a show like this will have polarized opinions. Uh, we are not used to seeing on screen women who have education and kinship, who come from a certain class of society um, and, uh, you know, and owning their lives and living lives on their own terms. And I do understand that that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. They're okay with seeing a woman in a village or a small town fighting, to, fighting with her parents or her family or the village to go out and work. But when it comes to women owning their lives in a, from a section of society where women are sort of, in a sense, uh, come from privileged homes, mm -hmm. I think it's very uncomfortable for people to watch. It's uncomfortable for men, especially in India, to see uh, women owning their sexuality as well. Right. And, uh, uh, and they're okay seeing it in a Hollywood film or in a Hollywood series or a Western series. But when it comes to Indian women, then again, you know, it's like, I mean, uh, you know, they begin to question it. Is this feminism just sleeping with men? No, there's a lot to the show. But the idea was to get into the minds of women and see why they do, why we do what we do right. and to do it without any judgment and with some sort of compassion. I want to also understand from you that there are a lot of intimate scenes, a lot of sex scenes in the show as well. What was the challenge like um, at the stage of writing? I understand from with the writers, you must have spoken with them and while shooting, what were your challenges that you faced and were there any certain things that you knew as a director you wanted to shoot in a certain way or you wanted to do in a particular way? Uh, none of the sex is gratuitous, either in the way it's been written or in the way that it's been shot. For me, you know, because we're talking about the lives of women, they're getting into their heads and their hearts in a sense. So when they're in in a relationship, the next level of intimacy is sex. And we wanted to address female sexuality. And to do that, we needed to show something, right? Some sex. I haven't shot, I haven't shot sex scenes before, quite honestly. Uh, but for me, it was like, I, have, I was approaching it from the point of view, that this food is scene, is what emotion is This is an intimate scene, this is what emotion is so I really approach it from that point of view. What is this scene actually trying to say? And, and I work very hard with my DOP and, you know, in kind of figuring out how to actually shoot them so that the emotion comes across. See, if anybody wants to see a sex scene, they can watch porn. We are telling a story and we're getting into the women's mind via that story. So whether it's for Anjana, when she goes to the hotel room to have, uh, to meet, you know, on that, uh, to, to meet Shashank, there, like in the script, it says that Anjana goes to the, uh, to the hotel room and she lets go of all her inhibitions. Now for me, it was, how do I show that? You know, with the background music, the kind of shots that I've taken. But I've kept it a dark mood, if you see. You know, it's a very dark mood tone, uh, visually and audibly, you know. Okay. And there's a shot, you know, where his hand goes up on her shoulder and he's wearing a wedding ring. I'm indicating that this, you know, she's doing something that she knows perhaps she should not be doing, but she goes out and she does it. And whether it's a mistake or no, she will figure out. For Siddhi, to, with Amit, in her head, she's not ready. She's looking, it's a search for self, right? For Siddhi in this entire season. It, you know, she said, ki, yaar, self love ka rasta self hate se hota wa jata hai. She says yeah. in one stat. And for her, it's really that about accepting herself. And she says, I'm not ready to be anybody's myth. You know? So it's like till you love yourself, till you find yourself, you're not ready to be somebody's girlfriend or be labeled like that. So she's very happy hooking up with Amit. He's attractive, he's funny, you know, he helps her. all of those things that you want in a guy. But when you're hooking up the sex ain't great. So, you know, she owns up to it and says, what the hell, yaar? you know? I mean, 
and and these are things that were not talked about yeah the female orgasm has never been important it's been you know just never uh, it's just yeah. been brushed under the carpet it's uh, samara and umang for them you know in season 1 it was a lot of lust yeah right in season 2 it's almost like a spiritual connection now it's right. a lot of love a lot of caring so i've in in the scene i've chosen moments you know intimate moments and nuances which give you that sense of give you that feeling so right. every the scene was approached by me and my dop uh, with what is the emotion that we're going for the siddhi character actually not just female orgasm but also how much can you discuss sex with your partner is also coming across um i want to ask you was that deliberately done in the script because female orgasm or sexuality isn't talked about as much as it should be definitely uh, it was one of the things that we wanted to address and you know and what better than uh, uh, you know a show like this which is talking about so many issues and we we're getting into complicated messy relationships why do some relationships fail why do they do well and uh, i think apart from the emotional and the other uh, uh, aspects sex also plays an important part in where uh, you know where uh, a relationship can go or not or depends on where you are in the relationship quite frankly and how much can you talk about what you like what you don't like can you work on it actually with the uh, lisa and vani's characters i want to understand from you did you speak to somebody from the community when you were showing their scenes as well and this is not just for their relationship because i feel like their relationship in totality encapsulates what what any relationship can go through but just the scenes that where they were intimate did you speak from people from the community so i have a few friends who are uh, who are gay uh i did a lot of research when i did a show called romel and juggle mm-hmm. a couple of years ago which was an adaptation of romeo and juliet with two boys so i had done a lot of extensive research then so before shooting this scene no i didn't you know i always approach my characters from a very human kind of humanistic point of view you yeah. know before gender people are human beings and i was like i said because i was going with the emotion of it uh i uh, uh you know it was actually one of the easier scenes to shoot quite frankly you know the thing is that all the all the actors bring their a game to the table so uh in terms of professionalism and uh, you know wanting to uh, crack the scene how the director wants it and all of that so you know those are assets those are plus yeah you know, and we talk a lot you know before shooting every scene the actors and i will have a long you know have lengthy chats like you know i mean but like in istanbul mandi came to my room one one day earlier and said okay how are we going to do this and we discussed it in detail so you know i mean before every scene even like you know with lisa and ba- um, uh, bani i mean we you know we sat there in that room and we talked and talked and talked and i said okay you know i'm thinking of doing this and maybe then you can do that and you know then maybe you can get up at this point so you know and i keep talking through while we are shooting a scene like that i keep talking to the actors you know and and it helps if my dop is also a woman you know the actors are comfortable it's a close set some uh, ott platforms uh, this is a practice in the west but uh, is slowly coming to india as well um, they have intimacy coordinators on set as well so did you have one on board because especially after me do the sort of situation has come into play where you can shoot a scene in the most realistic way possible but also make sure that the actors are comfortable do you have one intimacy like what what did you do i don't think we had a coordinator like that but i think the fact that uh, you know uh they were all very comfortable with me and i'm the first person to sort of not do anything if an actor feels uncomfortable i will just back off mm-hmm. uh my creator was very supportive like that as well rangita so i think we ensured that the set was a really really safe set uh do you agree with the criticism that the show gets that a lot of the character arcs aren't as developed and sometimes it's also rushed like the character arcs or the plots are rushed do you agree with that Yeah you know I, I, I there is a somewhere there is a point there I think because you know the format of the show is half an hour and there are 10 episodes now we are greedy people as storytellers we want to pack in a lot having said that if the show was an, a one hour show each episode then maybe they could have we could have a sort of uh, you know gone and you know elongated that you know that that uh, that track and maybe had more nuances than possible having said that i mean I think I tried as much as possible to make it seamless. You know, my pace is very fast. If you've seen my work, if you're familiar with my work, I mean, I, you know, uh, my edits are strikingly great. I watched great Auntie then. Way, and I love okay. it. So, like, I would like to tell you, like, what it's been like ten years since the show came, yeah. and I've still yeah. gone and watched it on Netflix again. Huh. 
like twice over i think so yeah i mean i'm not thank you thank you <laughs> so i am familiar with the work but i just want to understand from you that you know there are certain things in the show that need more uh, just for the sake of the audience you know i guess because in the first season we were rushed up you know with whatever was going on who they were who were they as people uh, i think perhaps at some point we may have also felt uh, like that but you know we were already in the middle of shooting and there wasn't much that we could do about it uh having said that i think that the whole idea was to balance each character you know you have to balance every character so that each each of the four girls gets their due in a sense when i see my work i always think of all the mistakes i've made so you know i i really can't comment on it like that but uh, we try to do the best we could and i think that I think if you see that uh, you know there are actually four just four threads right uh big threads running through the season one for each of the girls for uh, damini it was really how hard it is to have your creative voice heard when you're not pro establishment essentially that was her track and uh, for siddhi it was her search for self and acceptance for uh, anjana it was uh, you know uh, dealing with casual misogyny at work and then making the biggest mistake of your life by getting involved with someone who you work with so closely yeah. and then the ramifications of that when he's also married uh, for umang it was like how do you balance uh the power equation in a relationship right like do you completely get subsumed in it or do you try to find an equal voice in it and that's what she kind of uh you know uh rails against right in the end is nahi ever coming back <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Oh, Diksha! In between, I did hear talks of it being revived, but then it just fell through. I didn't follow up. What happened? So, I mean, it was the twenty-five episodes, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, I didn't, you know, I was exhausted. Like I'm exhausted after four more shots, and I, you know, I there's no way I can go on to season three because I'm exhausted, right? And I need a new challenge. And I felt exactly the same way after Mahi Way. Devika did write a few episodes, and uh, but Adi couldn't. Uh, Uh, decide on another director my producer adi chopra and fir wo bas and the head of wireof tv uh, ravina kohli she was adopting a baby she took a sabbatical so it just kind of it just like fell you know Did it just can i blame you for not having a second uh, run through uh, mahi ve can i blame you <laughs> for it please blame me. please blame me <laughs> well, i mean my producer even adi also asked me if i wanted to make a film mahi ve by the way and i said i think and i said no i think i need to do something different <laughs> wow okay so you really left a um, huge audience wanting more and we're not yeah. satiated i just want to tell you that but uh, good luck for four more shots second season it's been doing pretty well we're not going to see you as a director of the second third season uh, third season <laughs> there'll be someone equally capable or more capable you know running with it now so i think you'll see a smashing season 3 as well Thank you so much Nupur this is a lovely chat and uh, bye bye bye, bye.